Ben Affleck is undoubtedly an actor who is full of surprises, both on and off screen. He wrote his first screenplay and immediately won an Oscar. He has repeatedly made the list of Hollywood's most talented actors while also appearing in movies like Daredevil. He made an unexpected debut as a director and did so quite successfully. He also became Batman out of nowhere. He dated Jennifer Lopez and then broke up with her. He lived a seemingly ideal married life before announcing his divorce and dating Jennifer Lopez again. Basically, Ben Affleck's life deserves its own movie, or at least its own video. This is the story of Ben Affleck. We hope you enjoy. Traditionally, stories should start at the beginning, and for Affleck, many life-changing events took place when he was a child. Benjamin Affleck was born on August 15, 1972, in Berkeley, California. When Affleck was three years old, his family welcomed another child, his younger brother, Casey Affleck. Ben's mother was a teacher, and one day she struck up a conversation with a colleague at work who had a son about the same age as Ben. The woman thought it would be a great idea for their sons to become friends, so they set up a play date for their children. His mother's friend's son turned out to be Matt Damon. Affleck and Damon became genuine friends and spent nearly all of their free time together, which was very easy because they only lived a couple of blocks from one another. Although Affleck didn't actually have much free time from the age of 12, because he landed a role in an educational series called The Voyage of the Mimi and remained there for three years. His experience with the series made Affleck want to get serious about becoming an actor, and luckily, his friend Matt Damon shared the same dream. During one of the evenings they spent together, Ben and Matt decided to conquer Hollywood. The young actor's conquest of Hollywood didn't go as smoothly as they first hoped, forcing them to settle for roles as extras. But in 1992, Affleck and Damon were cast in their first major project, the film School Ties. In addition to Ben and Matt, the movie also starred Brendan Fraser and Chris O'Donnell. The film was warmly received by both audiences and critics and received fairly high ratings. After a successful big screen debut, young Affleck was noticed by Richard Linklater, who invited him to star in his film Dazed and Confused, which also starred Matthew McConaughey and Mila Hovovich. Although the film saw meager box office earnings, it was compensated by the love of audiences and critics alike, who had positive things to say about the movie. For some time, Affleck and Damon continued to ascend the ranks of Hollywood together. In 1995, Affleck met director Kevin Smith, who invited him to star in his new film, Mall Rats. However, this film suffered the same fate as Affleck's previous work. Despite glowing reviews from audiences and critics, the project only brought in $2 million in ticket sales. That same year, Affleck and Damon reunited, this time on the set of Glory Days. However, while Affleck was given the film's lead role, Damon was satisfied with just a brief appearance. The friends were able to work together again the following year when Kevin Smith invited both actors to star in the film, Chasing Amy. The film was warmly received by audiences and critics, and this time was able to make some money at the box office, earning $12 million against a budget of $250,000. However, Affleck didn't get to enjoy the film's success for long, as his next project, Going All the Way, which he starred in, was a total flop at the box office, earning just $113,000 and receiving less than stellar reviews. That's when it began to occur to Affleck that the roles he was being offered weren't the roles that he actually wanted to play. Matt Damon was thinking the same thing. One day, the friends got together and decided that if the studios weren't going to offer the meaningful roles that they wanted to play, then they would have to create the roles themselves. At Damon's suggestion, they sat down to write a script for their own movie. Thus, the screenplay for Goodwill Hunting was born which the budding actors, now also screenwriters, then pitched to Miramax Studios. The script was noticed by Hollywood sweetheart Harvey Weinstein, who immediately suggested that they make a film out of it. Weinstein introduced the young actors to Castle Rock Entertainment, who took on the project while Miramax handled the film's distribution. One of the few conditions that Ben and Matt had was that they would play the leading roles. As Damon later admitted in an interview, the producers at Castle Rock were initially considering Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt for the lead roles, but since the casting of Affleck and Damon came as a package deal with their screenplay, the studio compromised. Affleck also wanted his younger brother Casey to play one of these roles, as he was also taking his first steps in the film industry at the time. The studio agreed and finally launched the film into production. 
The project was entrusted to Gus Van Sant, and the on-screen support of Robin Williams was also enlisted. As time has shown, the concession made by the studios were not in vain. The film was a true hit. With a budget of $10 million, the film grossed $225 million at the box office. The story, the actor's performances, and the soundtrack by Danny Elfman were all highly praised by both audiences and critics. As a logical consequence of such universal acclaim, the film received nine Academy Award nominations, although it only won two of them. Robin Williams received his well-deserved trophy for Best Supporting Actor, while Affleck and Damon tasted victory together for Best Original Screenplay. In addition, the Friends also won a Golden Globe for their work. Audiences were so impressed with the rising star that they didn't even notice the failure known as Phantoms that followed. Nor did they even show up to watch it, as it grossed a meager $5 million at the box office. After the success of Goodwill Hunting, Damon and Affleck's creative paths diverged once again. Damon went on to fight the German invaders in the film Saving Private Ryan, while Affleck was tasked with saving the whole planet from an approaching asteroid in Armageddon. This film, directed by Michael Bay, did very well at the box office, grossing $550 million and receiving decent reviews from audiences. Some viewers thought the movie was too cliché, but the majority of moviegoers were satisfied. While the film's originality may have been questionable, there was no doubt about its popularity and the actors who starred in it. Affleck was now seen as a rising star and didn't take long for new offers from studios to start flowing in. The actor's next film was Shakespeare in Love, where Affleck starred alongside Gwyneth Paltrow. This project was also expected to be a commercial success. Critics and audiences were more unanimous in their positive feedback about the film, in addition to grossing $289 million at the box office against a budget of just $25 million. The film received 13 Oscar nominations, seven of which it won. However, Affleck was overlooked by the Academy for his performance, unlike Gwyneth Paltrow with whom Affleck had a romantic relationship during filming. By the way, this was Affleck's first high-profile romance, but the star's relationship didn't last long. But for a while, their romance was in the headlines of all the newspapers and magazines. As a star, Affleck didn't forget those who believed in him at the beginning of his career, so the following year he starred in Kevin Smith's film, Dogma bringing his friend Matt Damon along with him. The film didn't perform well in terms of box office earnings, with just $30 million in ticket sales, but it received excellent reviews. Audiences love Dogma, and quotes from Kevin Smith's comedy can still be found all over the internet today. In 1999, Affleck decided to try his hand at romantic comedies and starred with Sandra Bullock in Forces of Nature. But nobody appreciated the actor's debut in this genre. With a budget of $75 million, the film only brought in $90 million at the box office and received lukewarm reviews. However, the failure of Forces of Nature was nothing compared to what awaited Affleck in his next project. The movie Reindeer Games, which also starred Charlize Theron, only earned $32 million at the box office against a budget of $60 million, including marketing costs. Oddly enough, the only place in the world where the film was well received was Russia. Nevertheless, Reindeer Games became the biggest flop in Affleck's career at the time, but it wouldn't be the last, and certainly not the worst. More on that later. In 2000, Affleck starred with Gwyneth Paltrow in the romantic drama Bounce, but this movie didn't have much to brag about either. With a budget of $55 million, the film collected only $53 million at the box office and received fairly low ratings. Having experimented with various genres, Affleck decided to go back to making blockbusters. Luckily, there was an offer for a great project on the table. Michael Bay was preparing to shoot the romantic war drama Pearl Harbor, and invited Affleck to join the project along with Josh Hartnett and Kate Beckinsale. Unlike Affleck's recent filmography, Bay's movie had no trouble filling theater seats, ultimately bringing in $450 million in ticket sales. However, the reviews were not as definitive. The film received quite a restrained reception from audiences, and only a few critics enjoyed it. Ben Affleck's next project was another collaboration with Kevin Smith, called Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Released in 2001, Affleck essentially played himself, demonstrating that the actor had a good sense of humor about himself. Audiences definitely appreciated the gesture and rewarded the film with high ratings. Unfortunately, it didn't translate into box office success. 
as the movie earned only $33 million against the $40 million budget. Afterwards, Affleck turned to more serious roles, first co-starring with Morgan Freeman in The Sum of All Fears, and then appearing on screen with Samuel L. Jackson in Changing Lanes. Both films weren't exactly blockbusters, but the latter received better reviews, with particularly high praise going to Affleck's performance. During this period, Ben also publicly acknowledged his problem with alcohol for the first time, leading him to seek treatment at a rehabilitation center for several months. When he emerged, he starred in the film Daredevil. To call the film a failure would be like calling Uwe Boll an amateur director. I'm using Uwe Boll for comparison purposes here, but he had nothing to do with Daredevil. Although judging by the quality of the film, he could have. The movie was actually directed by Mark Steven Johnson, who would go on to put a definitive end to his career with Ghost Rider four years later. Daredevil became one of the worst films of that year. With a budget of $120 million, including marketing, it earned $180 million in box office revenue. Reading reviews from audiences and critics without breaking into a cold sweat is virtually impossible. The only people who didn't pan the film were those who couldn't be bothered to. It's possible that at least part of the negative perception was due to the fact that Sam Raimi's Spider-Man triumphantly hit theaters the year before. Anticipating another Marvel superhero film, audiences expected to see something similar but instead get something totally different. The film cast such a large shadow that even 12 years later, when the Netflix series came out, which many were initially skeptical of, there was still plenty of room for it under that shadow. Remember how I mentioned that I would tell you about the biggest failure in Affleck's career? Well, this wasn't it. Sure, Daredevil was decidedly an unsuccessful film, but few saw it as a personal failure on Ben's part. Any actor can have a bad experience in a superhero costume, but I'm getting close to the movie that nearly destroyed Affleck's career. But first, an important backstory that played a big role in this failure. In 2002, the media exploded with the news that Ben Affleck had started dating Jennifer Lopez. Every teen show, magazine, and other media couldn't get enough juicy details of this star-studded romance. Several articles in various magazines were published about Ben getting a tattoo of Jennifer's name. The couple apparently didn't mind the intense attention, and even threw a few extra tidbits to keep their relationship in the spotlight. Affleck appeared in one of J.Lo's music videos, making every teenage boy in America jealous at that time. It was such an interesting phenomenon. Nobody wanted to be Daredevil after Daredevil, but after that music video, everyone wanted to be Ben Affleck. At some point, the couple decided to take their romantic relationship to the big screen. And that's when the catastrophe that is Geely happened. The film tells the story of a woman named Ricky, played by Lopez, who isn't attracted to men. It's only when she meets the charismatic gangster Larry Geely, played by Ben Affleck, that she begins to reconsider her orientation. She falls in love with Affleck's character and forgets that she was once interested in women. Now that you've heard the synopsis, I'm sure you can understand that this movie never stood a chance. Not only was it bad, people literally hated it, with a rating of 2.6 on IMDb. Organizers of the Golden Raspberry Awards had a field day this time, awarding the film five trophies. A year later, they added another special statuette in the category of Worst Comedy in the First 25 Years of the Award. Geely became the biggest failure in Affleck's filmography. After such a fiasco, Affleck saw a sharp downturn in the number of offers he received. However, there were still some good projects among them. Films like Paycheck, directed by the king of slow-mo, John Woo. Although the film wasn't particularly successful on a commercial level, it still managed to get fairly good reviews. Next came Kevin Smith's film, Jersey Girl, where Affleck starred alongside Liv Tyler and George Carlin. Although Jersey Girl had nothing in common with Geely other than Affleck appearing on screen with Lopez again in the first few minutes of the film, it was enough to provoke universal disdain and remind audiences of the pair's previous collaboration. As a result, the film only grossed $35 million against a budget of $50 million. Personally, I think that's unfair because the film turned out to be really good. Many viewers felt the same and gave the film fairly high ratings. But the curse that hung over Affleck and Lopez after Geely left its mark on Jersey Girl. Kevin Smith later admitted that he should have waited until the anger towards Affleck and Lopez had subsided before releasing the film. For some reason, he didn't though. I don't know if the unsuccessful film experience affected the relationship between Lopez and Affleck, but it wasn't long before they announced that they were breaking up. 
things weren't looking so good for Affleck's filmography either. He continued to bury his career by starring in subpar films. The next of these was Surviving Christmas, which took in $14 million at the box office, with a budget of $45 million. Sure, crushing box office receipts don't always reflect a movie's quality, but Surviving Christmas is not one of those cases. Apart from being a flop, Ben Affleck's next film, Man About Town, wasn't memorable in any way. By that time, even diehard fans of the actor had lost all hope seeing a good movie with him in it. In fact, casting Ben had become sort of guaranteed that a film would fail both commercially and critically. Having hit rock bottom in his career, Affleck turned to his savior, Superman. Well, to put it plainly, Affleck starred in a movie that once again put him back in conversation as an excellent actor, in Hollywoodland. Affleck plays the role of George Reeves, star of the Superman series who died under mysterious circumstances. The film received positive reviews from audiences and critics alike. It also gave the actor's fans hope that Affleck still may have a bright future. This was indeed the case. Moreover, his personal life seemed to be getting better too. He married Jennifer Gardner, whom he had met on the set of Daredevil. I remember when I heard the news. I found it funny that instead of removing the tattoo he had gotten for Jennifer Lopez, Affleck just found a new girl with the same name. Anyway, things were really looking up for Ben. Between 2007 and 2009, he starred in the movie Smoke and Aces, He's Just Not That Into You, and State of Play. All three films had good reviews, and all except for State of Play did well at the box office. Despite a successful string of movies with him in the lead role, Affleck's greatest achievement during that period was his directorial debut. In 2007, he decided to adapt the novel Gone Baby Gone by Denise Lehane, and he cast his younger brother Casey in the main role. In addition to directing, Affleck also served as one of the screenwriters for the film. Affleck's ability to write screenplays had already been demonstrated in Goodwill Hunting, but not many were expecting him to also be a talented director. Ben's directorial debut was outstanding. The crime drama Gone Baby Gone was a worthy representative of the genre, as confirmed by praise from audiences and critics alike. Unfortunately, the film only grossed $34 million at the box office. More important than box office returns, however, was the fact that people began to talk about Affleck as a talented director and looked forward to his next project in the director's chair. In 2010, he directed the movie The Town. This crime drama, in which Affleck and Jeremy Renner played the lead roles, again got excellent ratings, solidifying Affleck's status as a talented director. The movie grossed $154 million at the box office, with a budget of just $37 million. It also earned Jeremy Renner a nomination for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. The success of The Town left little doubt that Affleck was more than comfortable in the director's chair, so Ben decided to stay in it for a while longer. In 2012, he directed the movie Argo, which many viewers considered to be his best work, not only as a director but also as an actor, as Affleck played the film's lead role. Ben initially wanted Brad Pitt to play the main character, but due to the actor's busy schedule, he had to decline the project. So Affleck decided that the next best person for the role after Brad Pitt was himself. With a budget of only $44 million, the film grossed $232 million at the box office, was extremely well received, and was nominated for seven Oscars, three of which it actually won, including Best Picture. Surprisingly, the Film Academy didn't even consider Affleck for the Best Director award. This injustice was partly compensated by the fact that Affleck received his well-deserved Golden Globe for directing. If Goodwill Hunting had lifted Affleck to the top of Hollywood at that time, then Argo certainly brought him back there again. Even his harshest critics forgot all about his previous failures, and film studios began lining up again. Despite his directorial success, Affleck hadn't forgotten about his acting career. In 2012, he starred in Terrence Malick's drama, To the Wonder. The film mostly made the rounds at various film festivals and won a few awards, but didn't garner much enthusiasm from general audiences, grossing $2 million in ticket sales along with average reviews. The next movie starring Affleck, Runner Runner, in which he starred alongside Justin Timberlake, also received lackluster ratings. Its box office earnings were also fairly unremarkable, bringing in $60 million, of which just $19 million was earned domestically. The following year, Affleck once again found himself in the spotlight when he starred in David Fincher's thriller, Gone Girl. The film was a phenomenal success, received rave reviews, and was considered one of the best thrillers ever made. 
it also earned $370 million at the box office against a budget of $60 million. Affleck's participation in the film significantly contributed to its success, as he fits seamlessly into Fincher's vision. Ben even postponed filming his own movie, Live by Night, to work with Fincher, whom the actor considered one of the greatest professionals in the film industry. In 2016, it was widely reported in the media that Affleck was preparing to join the DC Cinematic Universe. Initially, it was rumored that he would direct a Batman film, but it was later revealed that Affleck himself would play Batman. The news divided Batman fans into two camps. Some considered Affleck a good fit for the role, while others were vehemently opposed. Affleck eventually debuted as Batman in the film Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. The film was just as divisive as the news of Affleck playing Batman. Some people liked it, some didn't. I would say that I personally belong to that former group. While the movie certainly has its plot holes, and DC certainly isn't known for fully developing its characters within its cinematic universe, the showdown between Batman and Superman was well executed, in my opinion. Of course, the film score by Hans Zimmer definitely has an impact on my positive perception of the film. Despite mixed reviews, mostly negative, the film managed to earn $870 million at the box office. As for Affleck's portrayal of Batman, it was generally well received by audiences and I personally liked how he handled the role of Gotham's Dark Knight. However, I didn't like what Joss Whedon did with Batman in Justice League, when he turned him into a punching bag, which apparently was supposed to be funny according to Whedon. Given the history of less than loving reactions from audiences to DC films, Affleck decided to reevaluate his views on the cinematic universe and abandon the idea of directing a Batman film. But according to recent rumors, Warner Bros. was able to talk him back into it with the help of James Gunn, and it's quite likely that we'll see a DC film directed by Ben Affleck at some point. But that's all in the future. Let's talk a little bit more about the past. During the promotional tour for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, Affleck appeared to be sad, and it instantly became a meme. Many people thought it was because he regretted accepting the role of Batman, but not everything revolves around comic book movies. The reality was that Affleck's gloomy demeanor was because of much more serious problems. The actor was once again struggling with alcoholism, which he seemed to have overcome in his youth. A sad and not entirely sober Affleck became the number one topic for discussions on the internet. However, Ben didn't stop working, and in 2017 he appeared in two films. The action thriller The Accountant received decent ratings and was a box office success, but Live by Night, which Ben directed, will be remembered as the greatest commercial failure of his career. With a budget of $100 million, the film only grossed $20 million and received the lowest ratings of all of Affleck's directorial works. Once again, a dark period in Ben's career coincided with a dark period in his personal life. After 12 years of marriage to Jennifer Gardner, the couple announced their divorce. Fortunately, Ben was able to get help from professionals, this time without turning to another vague comic book adaptation. Instead, Affleck turned to streaming services starring in the Netflix film Triple Frontier and playing the lead role in The Way Back, a film about a basketball coach struggling with alcohol addiction. Comparisons between the film's main character and the actor himself were inevitable. However, it should be noted that Affleck handled the situation well, calmly answering journalists' questions about the similarities between himself and the character. In 2021, Affleck starred in a film directed by George Clooney, The Tender Bar which was released on Amazon Prime. The film received a fairly positive response from audiences as well as critics. Then came the long-awaited reunion between two friends on screen, when Ridley Scott's The Last Duel was released in 2021, starring Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and Adam Driver in the lead roles. The film was a box office failure, grossing just $30 million against a budget of $100 million. But it did well in terms of reviews. Well, Ben doesn't seem to be sad anymore at least for now. A significant reason for this could be the fact that he got back together with Jennifer Lopez. His most recent film to date is Deep Water, in which he stars alongside Ana de Armas. And if any of you are fans of this film, forgive me, but it's one of the most boring films I've ever seen. And judging by the reviews, audiences tend to agree with me. As I was making this video, I kept wondering why Affleck never invited Damon to star in any of his movies. When Ben was asked this question, he responded with a joke about Damon being too expensive. I suppose it could be the real reason we've never seen Matt Damon in a Ben Affleck film. 
Nevertheless, this regrettable injustice will soon be corrected at long last. Affleck's new directorial project, tentatively titled Air, will feature leading roles played by Ben himself, Matt Damon, and Chris Tucker. The movie is expected to come out this year. Looking back on Ben Affleck's career, it's amazing to see the emotional roller coaster he's been through. After becoming the youngest Oscar winner for Best Original Screenplay, he hit rock bottom when studio executives wouldn't break out in a cold sweat at the mere mention of his name as a harbinger of failure for their project. However, with his perseverance, Ben was able to pave his way back to the top of Hollywood, this time not just as an actor, but also as a world-class talented director. What's more, the films that Affleck has written scripts for or directed more often than not became box office hits and were loved by audiences. You could say that Affleck embodies the motto, if you want something done right, do it yourself. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Ben Affleck is the kind of person who always has a surprise up his sleeve, and we'd like to believe that this ability will continue so we can see more cool projects from him. We also want to believe that Affleck will be less sad. Well, that about does it for this video. This has been the story of Ben Affleck. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. See you soon.